The Godless Ones Epilogue An Avia Triblade listened intently to your field report. You tracked down Safini and eliminated the fret. The Diabloist was recruiting members of the Cult of Baphomet, also known as the Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth. The Templars were working with a team of Blackfire Adepts who provided a violent cuckoo demon to guard the Alcave. Your squad's researcher interrupted to explain that Backfire Adepts are devoted to widening the rifts between the planes, opening them up to the great beyond. They are opposed by the Whiff Wardens, who seek to close the borders of the planes and halt the advance of the dangerous creatures that might pass through them. Pleased at the opportunity to demonstrate her extensive knowledge, the researcher beckoned you to continue. You reported that Safini's wits were addled. She babbled about hearing a call of Yath. You gathered from her ravings that Yath led her into the world wound, and when the voice fell silent, she was recruited by the Templars for the Ivory Labyrinth. At the mention of Yath, your researcher interjected that the Pathfire Society has a book entitled The World Wound Gambit in the libraries of Nerasun. She explained that Yath was a living demon that served as both fortress and portal to the Abyss. It has some kind of telepathic call that drew people from Memdev across the Wardstone border and into the world wound. Yath was defeated nine months ago by the silver-tongued rogue named Gad. You remarked that the researcher was well-versed in the matters concerning the world wound and seemed quite smitten with Gad. The researcher shrugged and replied that there's little else to read about in Memdev besides the books of Imaday, demonology, and the world wound. Stories about Gad were a welcome respite from her usual duties. Avina asked you to continue, so you explained that the backfire adepts were hoping that Zafini, a Diabolus, conditioned to the lawful strictures of hell and now touched by the chaos of the abyss, could translate a tome known as the Lexicon of Paradox. Avina glanced in the direction of the expectant researcher, who explained that the lexicon was a sort of dictionary of improbabilities, detailing arcane reactions that can't exist in the world of Glorian, but are entirely possible within the chaotic realm of the Abyss. The book was shown to drive the reader mad. It was also rumoured to have been involved with the opening of the world wound in the first place. Avina asked you if you recovered the lexicon, and you said no. The Blackfire Adepts lost the tome within the twisted warrens of an abyssal-touched elven forest, and Savini never had the opportunity to read the lexicon herself. Something is afoot if the Blackfire Adepts seek out to reclaim the lexicon of Paragos, Avina said. We're fortunate you discovered their plot. That book could be the Crusade's first real chance at closing the world wound forever. I'll need you to pass this intelligence up the chain of command for further instructions. Rest up, soldiers. We'll need your services soon. You have succeeded in rescuing the captured Rift Wardens. All four of them are still alive, but they have suffered greatly at the hands of their captors. As a way of keeping them helpless, the Blackfire Adepts crippled each in some way to prevent spellcasting and also took away their arcane foci. Without rest and any means of regaining spells, the Rift Wardens had few spells left and were in no condition to fight. Jahani thanks you for your effort and agrees to send aid for a short campaign into the world wound. She also sets in motion a few plans to ensure the Blackfire Adepts could not return easily to Azur. She also pens a letter to Venture Captain Obo commending you for your heroism and resourcefulness against a terrible enemy. Scenario 02 The Elven Entanglement Prologue Thanks to the actionable intelligence of your last mission, Eurobeth began, we've identified several wooded locations within the world wound that might contain the lexicon of paradox. It's believed this tome is the means of closing the world wound itself forever. Eurobeth paused to let the magnitude of her words sink in. These woods are dangerous, and normally we advise crusaders to avoid entering them and travel around the outskirts. I won't lie to you, soldiers. Some of you won't be making it back from this assignment. If it's any consolation, your deaths will not have been in vain. May the Inheritor guide your steps and keep you safe. Avina has your patrol routes. Dismissed. The Dark Forest. The wilderness leads valiant souls astray from the laws of morals and civilization. Paths twist into a darker realm and light fades when travelers stray from starlight and narrow ways. The Watchtower. Heroes often go looking for trouble. Standing on the parapets of a watchtower makes the searching for it a little easier. 
Crusaders scanned the horizon from their lofty advantage point, looking for signs suggesting that dangers and the rewards that come from defeating it are nearby. Truly idealistic crusaders don't require material rewards for their fight against evil. The chance to hunt down and destroy the minions of the world wound is far more rewarding than any bauble, trinket, goo goo, or other forms of remuneration. The Wounded Lands The weak cannot always follow where the virtuous travel. West of Mendev, the Wounded Lands holds the center of the abyssal corruption in this world. Poisonous fumes choke the skies, and bubbling primordial coagulations roils in the realm of the Dark Heart. Don't rely too much on your friends and allies to help you here. They have to breathe the same air that you breathe, at least as long as they're still breathing. The Cemetery Many have died defending these lands from the horrors of the world wound. The lucky ones die here as death. The unlucky ones die more than once. When holy ground is retaken and corrupted by demonic forces, graves no longer offer comfort to the souls of the dead. When that happens, the restless dead escape from their graves and hunt living victims. Whether those remorseless killers are ghouls, ghosts, or stranger abominations, one purpose unites all undead, their undying hatred of the living. The Abyssal River just as the world wound has polluted Mendev, rivulets of corrupted liquid have seeped into the rivers running through its demon-infested wastelands. Poisonous sludge has replaced potable water, killing off all but the hardiest plant life. The strongest survive by learning to use this poisonous terrain to their advantage. As the land is corrupted, so are the monsters and madmen who dwell here. Their weapons are as poisonous as the lands of which they live, and the false faith of the world wound cultists. The Guard Post Mongols crawl through the tunnels of their hidden civilizations. Mutants and madmen patrol subterranean kingdoms like the ones beneath the city of Canabras. The gods have forsaken them, so they must remain vigilant in the darkness. Yet for any who can survive the patrols of corrupted soldiers stalking in the surrounded tunnels, a hidden village is ready to accept them. The town that lies beyond this guard post tenaciously endures like the ideals of a lost generation, dreams upheld by the descendants of a crusade nearly forgotten by history. The Cavern Getting lost in a subterranean cavern is all too easy. Even if you've bought a compass or a wayfinder, your skills at orientation above won't always help you when you're exploring underground. The Molten Pool Magma, rolling lava, searing steam. This pool has a nearly infinite number of ways to incinerate you, and all of them are exquisitely painful. Perhaps demons are the least of your worries. The Elven Entanglement The road to the world wound has pockets of deep forests laded with entanglements. Uprooter elves use the twisted forest to their advantage. An eager toad demon has greater ambitions, so the elves and satyrs must seek aid from the outlanders. For the purposes of recruiting new allies to aid the cause of cleansing the world wound, the Pathfinder Society calls in some old favours. You carry a letter of introduction and formal request for military aid to the homeland of the elven race of Glorarion and Kyoyan. The plan is to request from the Elven Queen Ediseril a loan of a group of Elven Rages to the Pathfinder Society's cause. Like Mendev, Kayan has engaged in an ongoing conflict with the demon-infested territory, known as the Tanglebar. This stretch of thorn-choked swamp and forest has been the dominion of the Lord of Terezel for more than two millennia, and the Elves have had just as long to hone their fiend-slaying skills. Terazar felt the recent weakening of the Mendev's defences, and anticipating the elves would help their allies to the north, he initiated a new offensive to expand his territory. Queen Eredazel agrees to send Pathfinder's aid as long as you rescue the Uprooters, a band of elven rangers believed to be missing in action in Tanglebear. She arranges for the group to be teleported to Throne Gate, a disabled elf gate, near the edge of Terazar's domain and the last known location of the Uprooters. As you find some survivors of the Uprooters squad, they explain to you that they have been performing a fighting withdrawal over the past few days once they realized the demons had discovered their presence. The demons eventually routed the elves, capturing many of them and sending the few survivors packing. Suspecting the Herazu responsible and believing their comrades will be subjected to unbearable torture, 
the elves provide you with instructions on how to reach Filazar's territory, as well as parting knowledge of some obstacles you might face and the possible havens you might find rest. Between Kilithas and Filazar's lair, you cross into the territory of Vinst, a satyr druid who has fought a losing battle to keep Tanglebear's taint out of his small patch of forest. Maybe it's possible to negotiate with the satyr, securing his help as long as you can see past his twisted sense of humour and demonic features. With the elves' directions and possible further assistance of Vince finally bringing your groups to Herazor's lair, it is said to be a murky morass in which humanoid-sized cocoons hang suspended from tall tree branches. The forest itself seems to be hostile and deadly there. Filazar and his minions must be defeated to save the elves before the demons begin to slaughter the bound captives out of spite.